always found the central plains of Spain a sad place. Neat and orderly, but lifeless. I wonder what this silent desert looked like centuries ago, when it was covered by endless forests and ruled by the most magnificent of predators. A secretive cat found nowhere else on Earth. The Iberian lynx. Banished from the plains, they had one last stronghold. An island of forest and hope. There were less than 100 individuals left. They were not persecuted in these mountains, but they were isolated and heading down a genetic bottleneck. Scientists feared the worst. A species can be doomed even before the last individual dies. And the lynx hung by a thread. Extreme measures had to be taken. Some of those last survivors were captured and sent to captive breeding centers. It was a risky one-way trip. But it worked. Their descendants would be released in the fringes of the mountains, hoping that they would one day reclaim their former range. The immediate danger of extinction had been averted. But as long as the central plains remain barren, the populations will be isolated and fragile. And their fate will depend on the courage of the pioneering lynxes at the front line. At the boundary of these two worlds, where the woodlands get ever thinner, lies the last hill. The place that I had come to visit. It was less impressive than I imagined, but it felt important to come. Because this was the birthplace of one of those pioneers, Salmorejo the interloper. I am a wildlife filmmaker, but I came here as a sort of pilgrim. I wanted to see his world, to climb the same rocks he must have climbed as a cub, long before he outgrew this place and ventured into the territory of a rival lynx whom researchers called Neville. When I first met Neville, he was in his prime, sent marking a territory that had been vacant for too many generations. Even though his lineage came from the breeding centers, he now belonged here, at the edge of the plains. But 
as Nevel staked his claim to this territory, another lynx started a journey in search of his own. He hailed from the southern mountains, a descendant of those that were never taken into captivity. So elusive that even the researcher's database had little on him. They named him Intenso. He traveled away from the stronghold, heading towards the hill. A quiet place where his son was born. Salmorejo. From this vantage point, the youngster could see everything. And when he was no longer a cub, he sensed an opportunity. Ten miles to the west. Nevel was growing old. Three years past his prime now fitted with a radio collar and no longer sent marking so confidently. Soon, the camera traps caught glimpses of a young stealthy male, the interloper. As the last rains of spring receded, I set out to meet this mysterious lynx. It was mostly at night that he appeared on the camera traps. Nobody had seen him yet. But the rains had transformed the landscape. A waterhole next to the filming hide would be my best chance. there were only false alarms. The sun was coming up and I was losing hope. The interloper was said to hide in the shadows. But that was about to change. never seen a lynx like this. I knew he was sensing my presence inside the hive. But there was something else troubling him. A scent mark, fading but unmistakable. Nevel. This land still belonged to the old male. But the interloper was brave and defiant. His mere presence here was risky. But the lynx in the wild has to face many hardships. Dozens of blood-sucking ticks, so common here after the rains, were the least of his problems.
for lesser incursions, many young males had lost their lives. But he came from a bloodline of consummate survivors. An unbroken lineage he would strive to perpetuate. Climbing the hill gave me perspective to appreciate the sighting and to ponder the prospects. Out of the two males, who would prevail? Old Nevel or the young Salmorejo? The outcome surprised everyone. In a tense coexistence, they both remained. It would be up to the resident female to decide who would father the next generation. But from this perspective, the plains looked even more desolate. Again, I thought of those bygone forests and wondered who could bring them back. Predators restore balance in ecosystems. When they return, the woods come alive. But it's not only about ecology. Waiting for the lynx, I noticed many turtle doves. Hunting has brought them to the brink of extinction, too. And these are still trophy hunting states. But the return of the lynx is shifting the land in a different direction. Away from the past. Towards ecotourism and conservation. shift in land use accelerates a shift in mindset and is the only path to restoring the plains. Could it be that the future of the doves and even the forest itself is tied to the plight of pioneering lynxes like Salmorejo in their quest to keep their bloodline alive? I still had one last morning before returning home. The camera traps showed that the female had been visiting another waterhole. Like the interloper, she was young and elusive. Researchers hoped that one day she would breed, but this year, maybe because of extreme weather, even the older females had failed to raise cubs. As the morning grew warmer, I pictured this female lynx in my mind, resting in the shade of a big tree, listening to the bird song, somewhere in this most peaceful of corners. What I didn't know is that she was already here. This was Ravenala.
and suddenly I was tense, afraid of making the slightest noise. But why was she tense? Why was she protective? I could not believe it. Not even the researchers knew about these cups. I was relieved to see that she would not let her guard down around her first litter. In a world full of wonders, she would be their only teacher. And they had a lot to learn. But some things they inherited. Every lynx is born with a unique attitude and its own unique beauty. Ravenala's coat, like that of most lynxes, had narrow round spots. But the male cub had a less common pattern of thicker, longer blotches. They must have come from the father only links around with a similar pattern was Salmorejo. In these young lynxes, ancient legacies flowed. The stealth of their parents, their bravery, and the strive to reclaim their lost range. For a few minutes, I felt like I was in that bygone paradise, full of beauty and balance. But deep down, I was also afraid that something might happen to her. all her three years, she had always stayed away from the worlds. But with cubs to feed, she had to travel further in search of prey. What she found instead was our thirst for speed. The 
same impatience that made us celebrate the recovery of the Lynx too soon. The only breeding mother in the area this year is gone. And for the official records, she becomes just another number. again to this lonely place to pay a tribute. But what can I do? Of all places, I get a cue from a famous poem written two centuries ago. Yet strangely fitting today. Ravenala only saw glimpses of the hill over the horizon. But in these weathered stones, there are reasons for solace. Salmorejo is no longer an interloper. I hear that he has now become the dominant male, and a protector for an unexpected lynx. The male orphan cub survived against all odds. He is out there somewhere, growing stronger by the day, and keeping his mother's spirit alive. never met anyone near the hill. But this forgotten summit marks important crossroads. A place where the mountains give way to the plains. Where the secretive become brave. And where loss leads to hope. But though a lovelier flower was never sown, the future of the lynx is tied to the restoration of the forest. Ravenala and her daughter are gone, but their memory will live on. Until one day, endless woods cover the plains again, full of big trees and birdsong. There is peace for the most magnificent of predators, the Iberian lynx.